Laden, with his twisted vision of a new caliphate, was dead, but had achieved far more than he ever dreamed. He goaded the largest, most powerful empire in history to reveal its worst nature. And like the Wizard of Oz, it didn't look so great and mighty. Who are you? Oh, I, I, I am the great and powerful Wizard of Oz. Bin Laden's martyrdom in the eyes of his followers cemented his place in the history books as a catalyst who weakened and perhaps helped destroy the old world order. Some might call him the Hannibal or Attila of Roman myth, a Robespierre to the old French order, Lenin to Tsarist Russia, even a modern Hitler to the British Empire, which came to its end in his wake. Bin Laden was gone. But what would the United States do now? Still tormented by its demons, it turned its gaze fully to China as a new threat and persisted in treating Russia as an old one, as well as maintaining Iran, North Korea, and Venezuela as regional threats. Seeking to find a more efficient, leaner form of warfare, Obama in 2012 announced a 14% cut in future infantry strength to be compensated for by an increased emphasis in outer space and cyberspace. First used for surveillance in Vietnam, the drone, when equipped with missiles, was now becoming the modern face of warfare and Obama's weapon of choice. He personally began selecting those on the kill list. Prior to 9-11, the United States had opposed extrajudicial targeted killing by other nations condemning Israel's targeting of Palestinians. But by 2012, the Air Force and CIA were deploying a 7,000 drone armada, used mostly in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Pakistan. Obama expanded its usage to Yemen in 2009, where there were fewer than 300 militants. By mid-2012, that number had increased to over 1,000 as a steady barrage of US drone attacks outraged Yemeni citizens. By 2012, Obama added Gaddafi's Libyan supporters, Islamic rebels in the Philippines, and Somalia to the drone list. The repercussions of this style of warfare are yet to be experienced. The number of civilian casualties of these attacks are fiercely contested by the US government and several human rights organizations. When the judge asked the Pakistani-born Times Square bomber, how he could risk killing innocent women and children, he replied that US drones were regularly killing women and children in Afghanistan and Pakistan. The cat was certainly out of the bag, and by 2012, more than 50 countries, some friendly and some hostile to the US, had purchased drones. Israel, Russia, India, and Iran claim to have mastered manufacturing lethal ones, but the most dynamic program was China's. As with the nuclear bomb, a new arms race was on. Bush had continued Clinton's expansion of NATO bases closer to Russia, breaking his father's promise to Gorbachev. Obama expanded NATO to Albania and Croatia, and despite abandoning 500 bases in Iraq, the Obama administration, in addition to an estimated 6,000 bases in the U.S., is maintaining close to 1,000 overseas bases that span the globe. The U.S. had, by late 2007, gained a military presence, according to Stanford's Chalmers Johnson, in 151 of 192 U.N. member nations. In 2008, AFRICOM, based in Germany, was added as a sixth command responsible for growing U.S. military presence in Africa. SOUTHCOM, based in Miami, was reorganized in 2010 to increase U.S. military presence in Latin America with bases and surveillance systems, counter-drug and counter-insurgency programs targeting manifestations of radical populism as seen in Venezuela. The 4th Fleet was reactivated in 2008 for the first time since World War II. The Navy now has 10 carrier strike groups patrolling international waters. America's Navy, 
a global force for good. In 2011, the U.S. sold an astonishing 78% of the world's arms. During the Bush years, Pentagon spending more than doubled to $700 billion. Although the real Pentagon budget blurs into secret functions and different departments of government, by 2010, according to the National Priorities Project, the U.S. actually spends an estimated $1.2 trillion out of its $3 trillion annual budget on military, intelligence, and homeland security. A full spectrum dominance of land, sea, air, space, and cyberspace. In November 2011, Secretary of State Clinton threw down the gauntlet on China, writing, as the war in Iraq winds down and America begins to withdraw its forces from Afghanistan, the United States stands at a pivot point Calling this America's Pacific Century, she meant a substantially increased military involvement in the Asia-Pacific region to contain China. Beginning with the Opium Wars in the 19th century, China has been humiliated time and again by stronger foes, Britain, Japan, Russia. It fought the US to a standoff in Korea in the early 1950s. China is a proud nation, the world's second largest economy, a hybrid. Part state-owned, part capitalist, it has replaced the U.S. as Asia's main trading partner. But in 1996, Chinese leaders were humiliated again by U.S. nuclear missile rattling during another confrontation over Taiwan. And with its economic interests and shipping lanes to protect, it set out to modernize its military. In 2012, the Pentagon estimated Chinese expenditures of $160 billion. But given the secrecy of the Chinese system, the real budget is unknowable at this time. Although it has only one foreign base, its hard line over disputed oil, gas, and mineral-rich islands and territories in the East and South China Seas have escalated tensions with its regional neighbors. Internally, the government, communist in name only, remains politically backward, determined at any cost to modernize and brutally willing to stifle dissent where its one-party rule has been questioned. Western democracies, while doing business with China, have condemned these policies to little avail. But more ominously, China has again attracted the wrath of China-bashing American hardliners whose animosity dates back to the McCarthy era. A new face-off is in the works. The U.S. has returned to Asia, seeking new alliances, rebalancing its fleet, deploying its top stealth warplanes to bases within striking distance of China by 2017. It has strengthened military alliances with China's neighbors, particularly Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, and the Philippines, sending 2,500 Marines to Australia, the first long-term troop increase in Asia since Vietnam. The Chinese were deeply angry over the Obama administration's new arms sales of some $12 billion to Taiwan in 2010 and 11. They have accused the U.S. of seeking to encircle them. 